I'm David Moran. And I'm Chris Jadwani. And this is our project. In this video, we're going to be getting four water samples from various rivers and ponds, and then testing for dissolved oxygen concentration in each sample, using kits provided to us by the school. The dissolved oxygen concentration of water is something that many scientists and farmers measure regularly. Just like all animals, fish need oxygen, and the dissolved oxygen of a certain pond or river is very telling to how livable it is. If the dissolved oxygen concentration is less than 4 mg a liter, it is not very fish friendly. There are many factors that affect the DO of a certain body of water. In the warmer seasons, there is less DO, as higher temperatures of water are not able to hold as much concentration of oxygen. Also, fast moving waters like rivers have a higher oxygen concentration, especially after waterfalls. Also, usually the bottom of a, of a body of water has the highest concentration of oxygen. This is a source of error to note as we were only able to take water samples from the top layer of water. Hey man, what's up? Friday afternoon, not much to do today. What do you wanna do? I don't know man, I'm just so bored. Hey, hey, why don't we go take some water samples? Yeah, let's go do that. Yeah, yeah. First stop, Grau Mill. And here we are at Grau Mill. We have some uh, geese here. Uh, like some ducks over there. And yeah, here's the river. This here is Grau Mill Waterfall. And since oxygen level concentrations are higher after waterfalls. Chris here is taking a sample. And here is our water sample up close. There you have it. Here is our second sample taking. There's David, taking our second sample above the waterfall. This should contain less oxygen, as we hope. And here is the second sample. Excellent. All right, uh, Chris and I are here at Ruth Lake Country Club. This is the closest lake we found to us, so yeah. We're, we're hoping we don't get caught or anything because this, this is going to kind of look weird. But yeah. yeah. Alright, wish us luck. Yeah. Alright, let's try this quickly. Come on. Yeah. Okay. Go, go, yeah, go! Yeah. All right, all right, all right, we good? Yep, <laughs> they think it good. Let's go. <laughs> all right, so we came all the way down to the end of Madison Street, and as you can see, we are at Des Plaines River, ready to take our last water sample. You ready, Chris? Let's do this. Yep. All right, Chris getting ready to take it. And there you have it, our last water sample. It is now time to test our samples. For time's sake, we are only going to show one sample being tested, our Ruth Lake sample. First, we fill up the testing container with our sample. First, we are going to add five drops of manganese sulfate. Next, we're going to add five drops of sodium alkali azide. Now, what happened here is the manganese sulfate oxidized the dissolved oxygen 
in the solution uh, which created MnOOH2, which is this brown uh, precipitate you see here. We now add 10 drops of sulfuric acid to our solution. And the purpose of this is to, once again, make the solution aqueous to turn all the MnOOH2 back into manganese sulfate, uh, which will then react with the iodide in the solution, which will then form iodine. And now I mix up the solution. And we now have a solution that's ready to titrate. Now I'll measure out 5 milliliters of the solution in a graduated cylinder. And then add it to a smaller beaker. Now we're going to add one drop of starch to the solution which will be our indicator. And as you see, it turns a very dark blue. Now, what we're gonna do is titrate the solution with thiosulfate until all the iodine in our solution is completely converted back into iodide ions. We'll know when the solution is titrated when it gives off a clear color. Unfortunately, this, this sample uh, gave off a clear color a little bit too soon, and this probably attests to it being from the Ruth Lake, a golf course pond, and it being on the top layer of the water. The drop I added from the syringe was about 0.2 milliliters. To get our dissolved oxygen concentration, we simply multiply that number by 10, giving us a concentration of less than 2 milligrams per liter of dissolved oxygen. Again, this number may be lower than the actual dissolved oxygen concentration of Ruth Lake because we got it from a high point in the lake. And the data we found, Des Plaines River Valley had 5.5 milligrams a liter. Ruth Lake had less than 2 milligrams a liter. And Salt Creek above the waterfall had 6 milligrams a liter. Below the waterfall at Salt Creek had 7 milligrams a liter. Thanks for watching. And have a nice day.